careful with those chemicals. Didn't you know? That calf and that tomato plant are filled with chemical elements. Like all living organisms, plants and animals are mostly composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Think about it. You, the calf, and the tomato plant are basically just four chemical elements. These same elements are found in the air, water, and soil, especially in the soil's organic matter. Which, by the way, is not the same thing as organic produce. No, organic matter is anything formed by living organisms that contains carbon compounds, such as manure, dried leaves, and food waste. Inorganic matter, on the other hand, is composed of other common elements, like silicon, aluminum, sulfur, magnesium, phosphorus, and potassium. Many of these common elements are important because they are nutrients for plants and animals and are often the ingredients for vital substances. For example, nitrogen is an essential component of proteins, the basis of muscle in animals. Likewise, magnesium is used to make chlorophyll, that critical substance that plants use to absorb light energy. Without these elements, plants and animals would not function properly. Water is essential for life, but for many people, the quality of water available may be poor. Analysis of a water supply may be required to find out whether the water is safe to drink or whether it needs to be treated before consumption. Methods of analyzing the quality of water are discussed in other films in this series. It is just as important, however, to ensure that the samples of water tested are representative of the water supply as a whole. Water sampling is therefore as important an activity as the process of water analysis. When a water sample is collected, care needs to be taken to ensure that there is no accidental contamination of the sample from the container the sample is collected in. During the process of sampling, during transportation of the sample from field to laboratory, if no portable field testing equipment is available, and by the way it is stored prior to analysis. Please scan the QR code for your attendance. Hello, welcome to my e-lecture series. I'm Dr. Wainur Fazila Wan Ismail. At the beginning of this video, you have been introduced with chemistry in general and also some information on analytical chemistry. In this chapter, I will introduce you to chemical analysis. So what does it mean by analytical chemistry or chemical analysis? It is a science of chemical measurement. We learn analytical chemistry in order to answer four basic questions about a material sample including what is the pH level of my swimming pool? Are there drugs found in athlete urine sample? How much caffeine is in a chocolate bar? And what is the form of contaminants in river water? Are they in the form of liquid, solid or gas? Analytical chemistry can be further classified into bioanalytical chemistry where you analyze biological samples such as drugs in urine, material analysis, chemical analysis, environmental analysis, and forensics. Common techniques or instruments used for those analyses are spectroscopy, mass spectrometry, spectrophotometry, chromatography and electrophoresis, crystallography, microscopy, and electrochemistry. If you are working as an analytical chemist, you will be dealing with sampling, sample preparation, chemical analysis, calibration curve, and interpreting the results obtained. This is the example of sampling process. In simple words, sampling process is a process to collect samples. Different samples will require different kind of sampling process. 
let's look at one example of chemical analysis where you want to investigate the caffeine content of a chocolate bar. It starts with sampling of the chocolate bar from the sources such as chocolate factory. Then, bring them to the lab and prepare all the apparatus needed for the investigation. You need to know the structure of caffeine and its derivative that may be given in the results. Here, you might get two results. One is caffeine itself and another one is theobromine, the precursor of caffeine. After sampling, you will start to do sample preparation, which is the step where you will transform a sample into a state that is suitable for analysis. Some instruments require only liquid sample to be analysed, and some instruments can measure both solid and liquid samples. The sample preparation also differs depending on the type of samples and instrument used. After the sample is transformed into the suitable state, now we can extract the caffeine and theobromine out from the sample to ensure it is free from other contaminants. Now come the analysis part. In this case, you are going to use liquid chromatography, where from the name given, it requires only liquid sample to be analysed. After injection of extracted solution into the liquid chromatography, you will obtain the result as shown in the figure at the right hand side. Both caffeine and theobromine peaks can be seen. From the results obtained, you will need to prepare calibration curve in order to calculate the analyte concentration. Analyte is your target compound and in this case, it is caffeine and theobromine. This is the example of calibration curve, a graph of detector response such as peak height versus analyte concentration. From the calibration curve, you are going to analyze the result. The way to analyze it will be explained in details in Chapter 5. This is the example of results obtained from the analysis. We can see that white chocolate bar also contain caffeine but low amount as compared to dark chocolate. Next is analytical methodology. It is a set of techniques that allow us to know quantitatively and or quantitatively the composition of any material and chemical. First, you need to understand and define the problem. Then, familiarize with background of problem and history of sample. After that, you need to do literature search and compare with similar previous studies that have been reported. Start sampling process, sample preparation and pretreatment and do the analysis. Next, after you have obtained the results, apply required statistical techniques to verify the results and come out with report. These are the details of analytical methodology where you need to consider all the factors affecting all the required steps. Let's do some exercises regarding chemical analysis. First, determine which of the given answer is the correct chemical analysis steps. Pause your video if you need more time. The correct chemical analysis steps are first, formulate the question followed by selecting analytical procedure, Sampling Sample preparation Replicate your measurement to ensure validity of results And lastly, report your findings So the answer is C Second question When performing an analysis, a chemist often uses a standard solution What is a standard solution? Again, pause your video if you need some time to think the answer for this question can be found previously when we discuss on calibration curve. So the answer is B. A solution that has a concentration of a chemical that is known to a high degree of certainty. Next, you need to find correct answer regarding the random heterogeneous material. The hint for this exercise can be previously found for case 1 sampling process. The answer is A. Differences in composition occur randomly and on a fine scale. Now, we are going to learn about how you can select suitable analytical technique to solve your chemical analysis problem. 
chemical analysis can be divided into two, which are qualitative and quantitative analysis. Qualitative analysis tells what is in a sample, while quantitative analysis is used to tell how much is in a sample. The amount or concentration of analyte in the sample can be determined using measured signal of the instrument. Thus, the precision depends on the instrumentation of fundamental phenomena. When talking about analytical chemistry, you will often come across solution terminology such as solute, solvent, aqueous, liter, atomic weight and molecular weight. Solutions can be formed with many different types and forms of solutes and solvents. When one substance dissolves into another, a solution is formed. The solute is the substance that is being dissolved, while the solvent is the dissolving medium. Aqueous is a term used to define a system that involves water. So aqueous solution is a solution in which the solvent is water. Liter is unit used for calculation involving solution. Atomic weight, also called relative atomic mass, is the mass of one atom of an element and is usually used to calculate concentration of solute in solutions. While molecular weight is a total of the atomic weight values of the atoms in a molecule. To calculate or provide concentration of chemicals or substances, these are the concentration units used in analytical chemistry, which is in terms of molar concentration, molarity and molality, or percent composition, weight to weight, weight to volume, or volume to volume. First, let's look at the molarity. Molarity is also known as the molar concentration of a solution. Molar concentration is defined as the moles of a solute per liters of a solution. While molality is defined as the moles of a solute per kilogram of a solvent. We actually looking at the mass of solvent here, not solution. As for the percent composition, weight to weight percent composition is calculated using the mass of solute over mass of solution. While volume to volume is where we divide volume of solute over volume of solution. Lastly, weight to volume is division of mass of solute per volume of solution. The weight to volume unit can also be expressed as a fraction where it is usually used to express very low concentrations. The unit now is part per million or ppm, where milligram of solute is divided with liter of solution. Another two common units are part per billion and part per trillion. Unit conversion. In analytical chemistry, you will need to do unit conversion and here are some of examples of commonly used units and their conversion. Preparation of solution. In preparing solution, usual step involved is weighing a certain amount of the reagent and dissolving in a solvent in a volumetric class. Before doing that, here are some tips for you. First, know your reagent and solvent. Second, know the molarity and volume that you need. Next, start calculate the mass of reagent. Then, weigh your reagent using balance and lastly, dissolve it in the solvent using volumetric flask. Remember that a good analytical chemist very constant on accuracy, so do it properly. Next is dilution. Dilute solution can be prepared from a more concentrated solution. A known volume of the concentrated solution can be transferred into a new flask and dilute to the required volume. By using the equation of M1V1 equal to M2V2, we can easily calculate the concentration. Last topic in this chapter is chemical stoichiometry. The stoichiometry of a reaction is the relationship among the number of moles of reactants and products as shown by a balanced equation. To get moles from mass, you need to divide the mass by molar mass. To get the mole from moles of a given chemical equation, multiply by the stoichiometric ratio and to get mass from moles, 
you need to multiply the moles with molar mass. Let's add the topics in Chapter 1 of Analytical Chemistry course. The tutorial of each topic is given in other specific videos. Go through all the given videos to deeply understand all the topics. See you in the next video of Chapter 2. Bye-bye.